good evening good afternoon not good evening good afternoon good afternoon everyone um or good evening depending on the time that you watch this um some of you may be on now some may be on later make sure you're commenting make sure you're sharing um so that i know who is watching who is with me and um yeah so i know it's been a while <laughs> since i have been on here um life has been lifing it's been busy um things have been going on but um nevertheless i felt an urge to discuss um about access today and so that's what i'm going to be talking about i'm going to be talking about access um and i want to give you the definition of access um, and i'm using it um, as a verb and it's to be able to use enter or get near something um, to be able to use enter or get near something that is what access is as a verb all right as a noun access is permission liberty or ability to enter approach or pass to and from a place or to approach or communicate with a person or a thing as a noun access means permission liberty or the ability to enter approach or pass to and from a place or to approach or communicate with a person or a thing i wanted to start off by talking about what access is so that you understand the context of what i'm about to say to you um, and I was in a conversation with my husband, just talking about some things that we have experienced throughout the years, different things that we have um, been through, just, you know, with people, each other, whatever. Um, and what really sat on me is that this year coming up, 2024, um, part of this year is either going to be your access is granted or your access has been denied your access is granted or your access has been denied so many of us are connected to people who uh, god has sent in our life to love on god has sent them there to be a help god has sent them there to be the family that we didn't have god has sent them there to be the friend or a friend or to be a support. God has put us in a community of people um, to bless us and to help us. And we often take for granted our connection to these people. And we think that we will always have the access that we have now. And the truth be told that access can get closed you can your access can be denied when you work at a job if you have a badge you have access into the building you have a password into the system you are able to gain access to the things that are there but when your employment has been terminated for whatever the reason is your access is now denied you no longer have the access to the building you no longer have access to the login you no longer have access to the email and we take people for granted as if we will always be as close to them that they always will be available that god will always have them here for us to have be an ear for us to pray for them for us to do whatever for for them but the truth of the matter is that if we do not treat these relationships right our access will be denied see we want people to show up for us we want people to be an ear for us we want people to do this to the to do that but any relationship any healthy relationship is a reciprocal relationship now you may not be able to do what they are able to do you may not be able to show up in the way that they are able to show up 
but you are still able to do something. Even with God, we have a reciprocal relationship with him. But when we get to people, we want to give them whatever and go forth and just think that their heart is always supposed to be open to us, that we can always do and show up when we want to show up and they're always going to be there whether they're family or not whatever and that's just not the case god will close the door and i feel it i've been feeling it so heavenly heavily that there are people who we have been connected to who hearts have been open they've been trying to be there for us they've been trying to pour into us they've been trying to do all these things but yet we are not open to receiving because we're too hung up on our past trauma. We're too hung up on being the victim. We're too hung up on still being in the same position when the truth of the matter is in order for us to love and appreciate the people who are going to support us, the people who are going to be there for us, we have to heal from that trauma. That person is not the person who did that thing to you. That person is not the person who did not show up for you. You're so busy looking at or trying to find fault in them that you're not even appreciating what they have done for you. You don't even take time to take an inventory of ways that they have blessed you, ways that they have done things, ways that they have gone out of their way to be a blessing to you. But you just think, oh, well, they'll always be there. And I'm not talking about death because some people do die and we miss an opportunity. But I'm not talking about that this that this access granted means that a person is going to die, that they're no longer going to be here. I'm saying that God is going to say you no longer have access to them. You no longer can reach out to them. You no longer are in the place that you were with them. And it wasn't them, it was you. We we so quickly want to say how people did us and what we did to people and, and this and that when the truth of the matter is that we're not being a friend. We're not being a, a spiritual daughter. We're not being a community. We're not being a part of the sisterhood because it's all about me. It's all about what I want. It's all about how people should interact with me. It's all about what should be done for me. And in a community, we're we're taking care of each other. In a sisterhood, we're taking care of each other. Even in a parental child relationship, we're still helping take care of each other in the way that we can at the level that we can. So I'm not on here to be long. I'm not on here um, to try to, you know, preach a whole sermon or pull out scriptures or anything like that. But this year coming up, 2024, the people that you were given access to, and it wasn't that you had access to them just for 2023, You had access to them in 2015. You had access to them in 2016. You had access to them for 10 years. And you treated them as if they were nothing. You treated them and the things that they they did for you as if it meant nothing. You wanted them to treat you better than you treated them. And in most cases, they did. But you don't think about how the person who is giving, how the person who is loving, how the person who is trying to be who God wants them to be in your life, how it impacts them when you're saying constantly, you're pushing them away, you're constantly um You're constantly shutting them out. You're constantly getting upset with them for things that they didn't even do. And for a time, God will allow their heart to be open to you. 
uh, good evening, Tara Lee, Sister Tara Lee. Um, for a season, God would allow their heart to still be open to you because He wants you to give the you. He wants you to get the love. He wants you to get the community. He wants you to get the parental relationship that you didn't have with your natural parent. He wants these things for you, but you are so caught up in staying in victim mode that you can't appreciate what God is blessing you with. You can't appreciate the people that God has bringing into your life. There is going to be an opportunity. There is going to be a grace period that God will allow you to get this thing right. But it's not going to be as long as you think. You think you have the whole year and you don't. You got a few months at, at best. You got a few months at best. Because the door is about to close. Because you haven't respected it. The door is about to close because you didn't honor it. The door is about to close because there was no value to you. And before God allows you to trample and, and tear up his good thing, the thing that he has said is valuable, a person who he has sent in your life, who he said is valuable and will be valuable to you before he allows you to misuse and abuse them for the rest of their life, he will shut the door. <clears throat> he will shut the door. He will shut the door. So I want you, as we're closing out 2023 and going into 2024, we only got a few days left, but I want you to think about your relationships and I want you to think about where do you put the weight? Where do you put the respect? Where's the value? Do you value the people who show up? Do you value the people who do things that they don't have to do? Are you still valuing the people who are trying to keep you in the same mindset, in the same mentality, in the same place, doing the same thing, chasing after the same type of men, same type of women, chasing things that mean nothing? Or are you placing the value in the people who are challenging you to grow? who are challenging you to come out of that thought process, who are challenging you to be better today than you were yesterday, who are still encouraging you that even though it's the end of the year, you still have an opportunity to change your mind, to change your thoughts, to change how you communicate. You still have an opportunity, but are you going to take advantage of it? Are you going to take advantage of it? There are some people, you know, I've been in situations where, you know, people had time to communicate with me, to get to know me, to whatever the case may be. And the door was open. The door was open. But instead of working, and just because the door is open doesn't mean that there's no work. Like, you still got to work on relationships, right? It's still work. I don't care what, what ship you on, what relationship ship you on, it still takes work. It still takes communication. It still takes both parties participating and doing things. A, a relationship cannot be carried by one individual. A relationship cannot be somebody who is constantly pouring out, constantly pouring out, constantly giving, constantly checking, and you're doing little to nothing. That's not healthy. That's not healthy. And so the door was open for them to uh, facilitate a relationship, to help cultivate a relationship with me. And they did not, right? And so when my heart was open to the possibility of what could take place, when my heart was open saying, I don't know what's going to happen, might go to the left, might go to the right, but I'm willing to open my heart to see what's going to happen. And they did nothing. And then now we down to the final countdown. Now you're like, hey, how you doing? Hi. 
what what you, <laughs> what's going on because you had all this time and now when my heart is slowly like well you know what it's not really worth my time they weren't really interested you know so i'm going to go about my business and now you want to come just because you're ready doesn't mean that i'm available now right and so relationships take work from both parties i don't care what ship you on a friendship a romantic ship a business ship family ship whatever ship you on it takes worth from both sides and then there's people who we've had relationships with who we were trying to cultivate something deeper and they wanted to stay at surface level and so now now the the relationship is not what anybody expected it to be and now the access has changed because maybe that person doesn't want a surface level relationship maybe that person doesn't want a relationship where you call to gossip on the phone i'm no longer interested in that that was good for a season key 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 i'm no longer interested in that I'm no longer interested. Uh, I'm not interested. And I can only speak for me. And you got to figure this out for yourself. But I'm not interested in friends that want me to be their parent. I'm not here to parent you. If I'm going to parent you, you're not going to be my friend. I'm here to have friends who challenge me, who correct me, and I do the same for them but not in the not in the parental role that there's a difference there's a difference i don't know um someone who's very close to me um i don't know if she's on she's more on social uh media than the other person i was going to say um but past overseer jazz um ortiz is a friend who will say tiffany girl you're doing too much <laughs> do it too much or you know you need to this is an opportunity for you to grow this is an opportunity for you to mature this is an opportunity for you to do whatever right and i can do the same thing for her but it's not in a childlike situation right we're two mature women and we're helping each other grow and become who god has called us to be and so I, I consider her a friend. And there's not many people I consider a friend. I will change a category. If you don't know, I will change a category and you won't even know it. Because I have to do what is in the best interest of me. And if you want to be surface level, you can be surface level. That's fine. But that doesn't give you the access that a friendship would give you. Right? So the relationship has to evolve or the staleness will cause animosity absolutely absolutely that's from my husband <laughs> relationships have to grow they're like a, a tree a plant they cannot stay they're like people we can't stay i can't stay an infant forever sucking on uh, breast milk or formula i have to grow i have to mature and if the relationship is in a constant state of a toddler mode, as for me, I don't want that. I don't want that. The Bible said when I was a child, I put away childish things. I'm no longer a child. I'm trying to grow. I'm trying to mature. I'm trying to advance and become who God has called me to be. And so you have to decide you really have to reevaluate these relationships that you have in your life you can't go through 2024 thinking that you have the same access that you've always had because some of you your access has been denied the way that you could call on that person the way that you can communicate you used to communicate with that person you no longer can because of how you treated them and it's not it's not their fault I want to say that it's not the other person's fault. It's you. And my prayer as a person who does her best, I'm not going to say I get it right all the time, but I do my best to show up for those who I tell that I love them. 
I do my best to show up for them. Right. And so when I put myself out there, there's been situations I put myself out there and for whatever reason, you know, me and the person separated for a season, not so much separated, but uh, we used to be able to see each other all the time. And then we weren't able to, and they treated me like I didn't exist anymore. And I was a shoulder for this person to cry on. I was there for them um, in different ways. Um, And when the access, the daily access was no longer available, they treated me as if I did our weekly access, whatever you want to say, they treated me as if I did not no longer exist. And that is painful. But my prayer is not that that happens to them. My prayer is that when God sends another person to be that to them, that they would treat them better than they treated me. And so you need to, people cut themselves off by being lazy in how they show up or the lack thereof. Absolutely. Absolutely. We want people to show up for everything and we leave people on read. We want people to instantly respond to our message, instantly text us back, call us back, whatever, because we're in crisis mode, but we leave them on read. We leave them. And so as this year is closing out, and you may even have some of January to do this, but you really need to assess your relationships. And pray and say, God, what is this relationship? And what is it that you want me to do in it? Who are the, do you, what kind of connection? What kind of connection do you want me to have with these people? Is this someone I can, I can, am I supposed to just, when I see them, Hey, be cordial, kind, have a little conversation. How deep does this relationship need to go? Because that's how we get hurt too, right? We, we, we bring people into a closeness that they never were supposed to have access to. So you need to pray and ask God for guidance about your relationships. Pray and ask God about how you're dealing with people, the people that he's placed in your life, because you don't want to mishandle those people. You don't want to mishandle the people that God has placed in your life in 2024. You don't want to mishandle them. So I hope that this blessed you. I hope that it was something that challenges you to be better, to think better. Um, I'm not going to make no promises that I'm going to be on my page more. I'm going to do my best. (laughs) My husband keeps saying, oh, you're doing the podcast again. This is not a podcast. It's just... You know, I get on here and I say what thus saith the Lord. Um, I get on here because I feel led to. I get on here um, because I want to be impactful, right? And so I don't want to get on here just to get on here with no fooly why. But I, to be honest with you all, and I, I, I kind of feel it now. I feel that it is needed that I am on here more. <laughs> And so I'm going to seek God about how he wants me to do that and what it looks like for Tiffany Natasha in 2024. Because I'm no longer afraid. I'm no longer allowing fear to keep me, um, keep me in a place that God did not intend for me to be. I'm no longer fearful. I love everybody. I want the best for everybody but everybody can't walk this walk with me and everybody's not going to go with me. And that's okay. That's okay. I love on you while you're here and I wish you the best if you decide to walk away. Um, Unexpressed expectations lead to dissolution of relationship. One has grown and the other has remained the same. So you need to talk to both parties so that both parties are on the same page. Absolutely. Absolutely. We miss your videos. <laughs> I'm working on it. You know, my, um, the purpose of my page is faith, 
family, food, and fashion. Um, and that is all the things that encompass me. Because if you know me, you know I like to put on a, I like to dress up. <laughs> I like to cook. I love my family and I love God. All four of those things, all those Fs embody who I am. Faith, family, food, and fashion. But I will definitely be seeking God about what it is that he would have me to do, how often he would have me to be on here, um, and what it is that he wants me to discuss. Because at the end of the day, Tiffany Natasha is not mine. Tiffany Natasha is God. And whatever he wants me to do here, that's what I'm willing to do. So I ask that you would keep me lifted in your prayers as I go on to do the things that God would have me to do. Um, I love you all. Um, I thank you um, all for being on here. Um, I don't know if there are any questions, but if there are, I can answer them before we close it out. If there aren't any questions or um, something maybe you need me to elaborate more on, uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> uh, uh, thank you, honey. Um, if there are any questions, I'm willing to ask them. Um, I prefer lives more so than pre-recorded videos, but um, I will try to do some pre-recorded. I've been on here almost 30 minutes and that was not my intent, but here we are. Uh, <laughs> here we are. Um, so don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit that bell to be notified. Don't forget to like, Comment, subscribe, hit that bell to be notified, and I will see you all in, oh, how should a person navigate growing apart from someone who they've known for years? So the, the question to, for me to you is, do you believe that the relationship is worth saving? Do you believe that the relationship is worth saving? If you believe that the relationship is worth saving, um, then I would have a conversation. Well, first I would pray and I would ask God to give me the words to say. I would ask God to allow me to come in a posture that the person can receive what it is that I'm saying, because the purpose of communication is to bring understanding. And so I want them to understand what I'm saying. But if I'm coming to be argumentative or if I'm coming um, to just kind of get my way, then that's not a good way to have a conversation. So I would pray. Um, and then I would pick up a, a mutual place that is good for both parties to be able to talk, um, and then go from there. And it's more about history than anything new. Um, so I would try to, they are familiar, but no growth, no spontaneous things happening. Um, I would try to do something new because if you've known them for a long time sometimes you can the fire is not gone right sometimes the fire can be rekindled um so i would try to interject new things into the relationship and then if they the person is not receptive or the person is just happy with where the relationship was at and does not want to grow does not want to move forward and do new things, then I would say, you know, I would have a conversation again. I would be prayerful about it first. I would come in a good posture, meet at a mutual place that is, um, you know, not where both parties feel like they can be comfortable. And I would just say, you know, I think we had a great run. I think we did some great things together, but it seems that we have outgrown each other. It seems like I am moving in this way and you are moving in that way. And they're not necessarily aligning with each other. And so I don't want to be a hindrance to you. And I don't want you to be a hindrance to me. And we will always have what we had. And maybe at some point we can, our paths will cross again. 
But at this moment in time, we're not being beneficial to each other. That's me personally, what I would do. It's not that I'm upset with you. It's not that you did something and I'm angry. I'm just noticing that I am moving to the left and you're moving to the right. You know, sometimes even we begin to live different lifestyles, you know, and, and they don't align with each other. So I would have a conversation and I would go on from there. Any other questions? <laughs> Thank you so much for your support, husband. <laughs> Thank you so much for your support. <laughs> well, if there is nothing else, I will see you in my next video. Um, whenever that may be. I love you all. I pray that you have a wonderful new year um, and that you... Do the things that God would have you to do more than anything, more than anything, more than seeking God about the people in your life. Seek God about the direction that he wants you to walk and then seek him about the people in your life. Because some of us, we don't even know who we are. And so we need to go back to our father and say, God, who am I? Show me me so that I can walk in the fullness of the things that you have for me. I love you all. I love you all.